guys, let's hop right into it. I've noticed that I have gotten quite a few questions regarding how to deal with your flute section or whatever section you are in, in orchestra or band, what to do with them if you are sitting in principal chair and everyone else is not as good as you. Some people have termed this, how do you deal with a crappy band? I did not say that, that was you guys. Like, what do you do when people don't listen to you when you're sitting in the principal chair? I think that for most of you who are watching these videos, music is a huge, huge part of your life. I mean, you wouldn't be procrastinating with my videos if you didn't really like music. Now the thing is, when you are sitting in a principal chair, it means a couple of things. One, you have been working very hard on your instrument of choice. You are probably pretty passionate about music. You feel the importance of the position you are sitting in. You feel it. When we are sitting in that position and we look at the people who are in our section, most likely you will be dealing with a whole bunch of people who are not as good as you. So here come the tempting thoughts that we have. I kind of see this as swinging to ways. On the one hand, you might want them to be at the same level as you so that you can make better music. So you're probably thinking to yourself, why am I stuck with them? Why don't they just get it? Most of the time you will be working with your section on things that they don't get. Or you might be thinking to yourself, why don't they just practice more? Why don't they just practice as much as I do? Or if your intentions are a little bit more on the nefarious side of things, you may actually find yourself thinking about how to keep them at their not as skilled level so that you can be better than them always. The idea is I don't have to fight to keep my position as first chair. I am not going to lie and say that I personally have never thought this. There's a reason why I can say it on camera. It's because I have indeed thought of this. I am not proud of it. I definitely think that I am not perfect. Now, did I act on it? No, I did not act on it. My inner conscience was telling me that that was a terrible thing to think of. Now, having said all this in terms of the tempting thoughts that you have in your head. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make here is that it's all in your head. Is it really happening in real life? Probably not. Now the reason I say this is because every single question that I just posed in terms of you know the types of tempting questions that you have in your head, none of those questions actually have anything to do with the people in your section. It all has to do with you. The bottom line of all these questions is why aren't they as good as me? Why can't they be as good as me? How can I make them not as good as me? It's always me, me, me. The kick in the face in terms of what the reality is that these people in your section may not actually care about their chairs, their positions, or about you as much as you think they do. Really, it might all just be in your head, as sad as that sounds. When I was in my master's and I was taking care of a 17 flute section, like that is a huge section. Most of them were from other majors actually, and they chose band to be one of their electives. I really had to kind of like steal myself back and be like, they're not trying to be professional musicians. They are just trying to learn and make awesome music. And my job as their principal flutist was to make sure that they learn and make good music. I don't think in the beginning they really cared who I was. When we first started rehearsing, none of us knew each other. So it's like, why would they care about me? Realizing that hit me in the face pretty hard. I realized that they have other lives, they have other majors, they study other things. And because of this, I started to realize that all of these people are better at so many more things than me. Let's put it in perspective here. We had engineers in there, psych majors in there too, and you know, people who are studying things that can really rock this world. And I was better at flute than them. Now, if you put it in that perspective, you really realize that you don't really matter. It completely changed the way that I talked to them. You know, I wanted to hear about, you know, their majors. I wanted to hear about the projects that they were doing. I wanted to hear about the exciting trips that they were taking. It just made them so much more interesting to me. I hope that I learned as much from them as they learned from me about flute. What I learned was that you can't judge another person by how well they play your instrument. You don't actually matter to them. You only start mattering to each other when you're friends. By the time you're friends, there's no real point in competing, right? 
right? So yeah, basically all I'm saying is that it's very dangerous to make assumptions about other people. To them, everything that you're saying and doing that you may not be aware of might come off as very standoffish, super arrogant, that you don't care or respect them. There are multiple ways that people react to this. Some people will retaliate. Other people who are more like me will shut down and not talk to you. If you find that people are having these sorts of reactions to you, I would encourage you to do a little bit of self-reflection. Most likely, if you have assumptions about other people, you are probably doing and saying things that you're not even aware based on those assumptions. So you may never find out what you did or what you said that might have offended other people, but you probably can figure out at least what your assumptions are about them. And if you break that assumption down and you just genuinely want to get to know them, you know, people will figure that out. We musicians might be socially inept, but we're not socially dumb dumb completely either. Because we do have this emotional aspect about us that is super strong, which is why we can play music. We're very intuitive. And when someone's being genuine with you, you'll know. I feel like we always make sitting in the principal chair a, a much more complicated thing than it really is. It really is just music. I hope this video helped you guys. I hope it wasn't too abstract. If you guys have experience with this type of thing, I would love if you would comment below with your stories on dealing with other musicians, whether they be better than you or not as good as you. I really feel like a lot of us can learn from each other in terms of you know our mistakes and our successes. I'm really looking forward to your stories. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there, and if you wanna catch me during the week, my social media network stuffs are down there. But otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye. I'm finally doing what so many of my favorite YouTubers do, which is film in front of natural light. I have not filmed in front of natural light for a very long time, ever since I got my super cheap lighting. But I have noticed that it's not really working that well with this camera. It works better with my previous camcorder, um, which was way lower quality. Let's see how this works out. I hope the lighting doesn't change too much throughout the course of this video. Also, apologies if my stomach is growling because this is actually the second time I am filming this because the last time was completely out of focus.